Hi, my name is Abby Linville, and today I'm going to be sharing with you about Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is a website that helps you organize videos that you may show in your classroom, and it also allows you to create quizzes to go along with those videos and provides a way for you to track your students' um, viewing of the videos and their progress in understanding using the quizzes that you assign to them. I found that this um, website would be a great way for educators to meet their ISTE standards of incorporating digital tools into their classroom to promote student learning. And I also thought it was a great way to show that um, the teachers um, was fluent in current technology systems. So I'm going to go ahead and show you um, how to use Edpuzzle. You'll first sign up for an account and all you need to sign up for an account is an email address and then you'll create a password. After that it will take you to the home page which is what is being shown right now. And you can kind of see some things that it allows you to do. You can create folders to organize the content that you have in your classroom. Um, it also has some tools to help make sure that your students are using the videos um, effectively by allowing um, you to block the students from skipping ahead in the videos. And it also allows you to embed the lessons that you create on here um, in other places, whether it be like on Google Plus or in a Smartboard lesson. So if you go over, you can create a class. So if you click on the My Classes, then you can click Add Class, and then it will have you type in the name of your class, um, the subject area, and the grade level. After you create your class, it will give you a class code. Um, when you have your students register on the Edpuzzle website, which would be free for them as well, then they'll just click in that class code, and then it will give them access to the content that you're assigning for the class. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my content and show you how to use this. So I have already um, uploaded a YouTube video that um, I was wanting to use in my classroom. The great thing is that because you're using videos that either you created if you are having a flip classroom and you may have uploaded videos that you've already created to YouTube, you can use those, but you can also use um, other YouTube videos that are, that are out there as well as brain pop videos if your school has a subscription to that. Um, it can really cover any content that you want to cover so it's great for science, social studies, um, English language arts, math, and so on. So if you would like to create um, a lesson with a new video you'll just go to create and then you'll go to new video or if you had one that you already wanted to upload you could just click upload. So I'll click new video just to show you um, some places that they'll recommend that you can get it from. If you already have the URL you can just um, copy and paste it into here. I am going to go back to the video that I already pulled and one way that I thought I could use it in my primary classroom and this just is one way that you could use it but um, is to on YouTube they have tons of stories that are being read aloud and I thought it would be a great center activity to take one of those videos of a story being read aloud and then add quiz questions to it so that I would be able to monitor and check my students understanding. So I'm going to click on it and then show you um, how to edit the video and add in your content. So this is where you can crop the video. If you don't want to show the whole story, maybe just half the story, you can just move these in and out to crop the video. I want the video to be left whole, so I'll just leave it as it is. And this little microphone here is to create an audio track. If you wanted to add you talking over the entire video, um, this is what you would click on. But if you just want to add in a little audio note, where you might want to introduce the activity to your students or at the end of the video you might want to add a conclusion or ask them how you want them to extend their learning. Um, you could add that in using the audio notes. Today I'm just going to be adding some quiz questions in 
and I already added in one quiz question. I'm going to click on it and show you. So I just went to the part of the video. I just moved this question part down here to the part of the video where I wanted it. And then I clicked on the question. And then I typed in a question for this one. I said, where is the setting at? Is it the forest at night or the farm during the day? My students would click the right answer if we were watching in their viewing, and I'll show you that a little bit later. So I'm going to click continue. It's going to start playing the video. I'm going to um, press play, and then I'm going to move it along a little bit. And then if I wanted to add a new question in, I might want to say, um, I'll click on it and then I want to do a test question. You can do an open-ended question or a multiple choice. I'm going to do the multiple choice and then I would just type in where a question where are the animals going and then I type in the right answer here and the wrong answer. If I wanted to give more than two choices I could um, click add answer and that would add more than one. So then I'll click done and now my questions there. So as my students watch the video, the video will stop and then ask them the question and they'll get a choice to answer it. So let's say that's all I wanted to do to my video. Then I click on done. I'd cl click save and exit. I've already created a title for it. Um, so that's the time where if you wanted to add a name to your video, this would be the time that you do it. I'll click Save and Exit. And then I get to select the class that I want to assign the video to. I only have, right now, um, one student assigned. I just created a generic student. So I click on that. And then I also clicked on Prevent Skipping so the student would be able to skip ahead in the um, and the student will be able to skip ahead while watching the video. So then I'll click Save this assignment. So if you wanted to check the progress of your students and whether or not they're getting the answers to the questions on the quiz is correct, you'll just click on Progress, Watch the Progress. And here you'll have the names of your students and then you'll click on Watched or you'll look under Watch to see who has watched the videos. It will show you the grade for the quizzes. Um, it could tell you when the last time they watched it and it could tell you overall as your class is everybody understanding the answer to question one or question two. It just gives you a good way um, to check your students understanding of the content that you're covering in class and the content that was being covered on the video. I found that the intended audience for um, Edpuzzle would be it's mostly used by teachers but that students would be able to view these assignments as well at home for homework and you could also assign them in class. I think they would be best viewed um, at the upper grades outside of the classroom so the students would be prepared for the new content that you're going to present that day. But I also think that it could be used in the primary classroom as a center that you assign students um, during your guided reading block. I hope that um, you saw Edpuzzle as something that you might want to use in your classroom. I think that is a great tool and I think that it would be um, a great way to integrate technology into your instruction. Thank you for watching.